Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Austin Wynn. I'm going to be a fourth year medical student at the University of Illinois College of Medicine. I make helpful videos for everyone, pre-med, medical school, and hopefully beyond that too. We'll see where everything goes. But today's video, if you're here and clicked on it, then you're interested in learning more about Anki, how to set it up, what add-ons to get, and basically a basic one-on-one into Anki and simply how to get it set up so you can use it to master whatever you're looking to master. So I don't need to go into all the nitty gritty details because if you're here, you want to use Anki and you know it's a powerful space repetition flashcard program that I've talked about extensively throughout my channel. So there's so many videos you can check out if you want to learn more about Anki. Today's goal is to really just set up Anki from start to finish. I'm going to show you how to install Anki, how to get the settings correct, and then some basic add-ons to get you started and how to import specific decks to use. For me, my expertise comes in with Anki for step one and step two for the USMLE medical school licensing exams. And also I dabbled a little bit with pre-med stuff, so MCAT Anki related material. So basically whether you're using Anki for the MCAT or medical school, this video will get you set up to the point where all you have to do is import the either Anking deck for medical school or one of the many MCAT decks. Other than that, this will get you kickstart on Anki and all the basics that you need to know. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. We're going to get started on this video. All right, everyone, so first things first, we're gonna jump over to apps.ankiweb.net. Link will be in the description, and we're just gonna go ahead and download Anki, so press download here. It'll bring you down to where you can download either Windows or Mac, whichever you're using, and here's the latest version, 2.1.49. No matter if you're just starting Anki today or updating from an older version, like 2.1.2 or three or something like that, you're just gonna download it just the same. We're gonna run the exe file and execute. Alrighty, once you have it downloaded, go ahead and run that file and then install it. Alright everyone, so when you boot Anki for the first time, it's going to look something similar to this. I started a new profile so all of you can see what it looks like from the beginning. All you have is this default deck. Of course, I'm probably going to have all these random things that you're wondering what the heck is that. So these are just some add-ons I have. It gives you some more information on how fast you're studying, how many cards you have during the day. And also this thing that says no activity data to show here. Uh, it's basically a heat map that kind of shows you how much cards you've done today, how much you've done in the past, and what you have due tomorrow. So there's no data here since we haven't done anything in this deck yet, but at the uh, end of this video I can kind of show you what that looks like. Uh, so we'll start with the add-ons. Uh, I have another video that I created on add-ons. I will link it up to the top and uh, you can definitely go and check that out in the top right corner. I think that will explain things a lot more clearly. Uh, but for the purposes of just starting Anki for simple 101, I would recommend these add-ons only, these top five here. Hierarchical Tags 2 keeps your decks organized. Pretty much uh, you kind of have to use it so you can find cards in the right tags if you're using uh, the Anking decks or the MCAT decks. Uh, the more deck stats and time left, that's some of the things you saw on my screen already. It just gives you more information. The review heat map I talked about already. True retention is also just more information on your stats tab. And special fields helps you update from on king updates so different USMLE step one decks. Everything else I'd recommend you watch other videos for, watch the videos I have on my channel, and install your own discretion. You don't necessarily need add-ons for Anki, but they do uh, enhance the experience. I would recommend these five just as a quick, easy starter pack. So if you don't know how to install add-ons, it's really easy. You just press get add-ons, and you just paste the code in from the link where you get these. Now I'll put all those links in the description. It's basically from the Anki website. You'll have a certain number of digits to type in here, copy and paste it, press OK, restart Anki, and your add-ons will be installed. So that's basically add-ons in a nutshell. So now we're going to talk about the settings. So first settings we're going to do is if you go to tools up here, you're going to go to preferences. Don't worry about this stuff down here. It's because of my add-ons, so don't worry if you don't have that. Go on preferences. For basic, you're really not going to change anything. Main things you're going to change here are in scheduling. So I'd recommend just checking the top two, which is the default. There's this new V3 scheduler for beginners and people just starting Anki. I wouldn't recommend it. I don't use the V3 scheduler. I don't think you need it. And honestly, like if you want to go into more depth on Anki, like this is not the video for you. I'd recommend videos from the On King. I can link his channel here. He goes in a very in-depth analysis. I've learned a lot from him as well. Uh, I'm here to just bring a short, simple Anki 101, just bare bones, how to 
you know, use Anki as a way to retain information and excel in medical school and pre-med MCAT stuff because that's really what you need it for. It's a means to an end, and I don't think I'll use Anki for the rest of my life like maybe some other people on YouTube, but um, basically all I would change here is change this to new cards uh, after review. So I like to do all the reviews first, which are the cards that are due for the day that you've already seen before, and then do the new cards after so you can kind of get those reviews out of the way. Next day starts at 4 hours past midnight. That just means that you'll see your new cards at 4 a.m. the next day. Feel free to tweak that as much as you will. I've never done Anki earlier than 4 a.m., so that's always been fine for me. Network, leave the same. Backups, leave the same. That's all you have to do for that. The next thing you're going to do is click this little wrench here on default, and we're going to work on the options, okay? Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Helpful videos coming as soon as I can and can fit into my schedule. I don't like to commit to a weekly thing because I know I won't be able to do it, but stay tuned and don't forget to subscribe. Let's do it. So this is full screen and might open like this for you. Just go ahead and full screen this. So this is different than the old Anki versions and different from my original video I made a couple years back. So let's start from the very beginning. Daily limits, new cards per day. When you're studying, every day is a different day. You don't know how much demand you have and how much studying you have to do, especially for me in medical school. There's quite a bit to learn someday. So make the new cards 9999 because that just means that you'll do as many new cards as you unlock and unsuspend. That's the best way to do it, just because some days you have more, some days you have less, but you should never cap yourself. Same thing with reviews, you should always do all your reviews every single day. Um, basically, this is the cards, like I said, will come back that are due that day, and you've seen them before. And you'll notice if you have the add-ons installed, these ones tend to be red or green. So red is still in the learning phase. I'll talk about that more as we go on. Green is the graduated cards that are due for review, and the blue cards are the new cards per se. So let's talk about the new cards. Every card has learning steps. You can read more about this in your own Aki program, but I'll do my best to explain just the gist of it so you can understand what you're doing here. So when you see a card, what it's set at the default is that you'll see it in one minute and then again in 10 minutes, and then you'll graduate the card. The problem with this is that in Anki, you don't want to graduate cards too early because once they're graduated, when you get them wrong, it's going to do something called shrinking the ease. And we'll talk about this more when we get to the advanced settings over here. But in a nutshell, every card has a starting ease. And basically, if you get cards wrong a lot when they're graduated, you're going to shrink the ease, which shrinks the interval of the card. So for example, uh, if you see a card in one day, then three days, then seven days, that's the normal interval. If you start pressing again a lot, you might see cards more frequently, like one day, two days, four days, and you start doing more and more cards because you're getting it wrong, and you're basically telling the program that, oh, I don't know this, so I need to see it more often. Whereas, when I'm gonna switch this, is I'm gonna do 10 minutes for the learning steps, and then 14, 40 minutes, which is the same as the number of minutes in one day. You can see how it changes there. So the graduating interval I'm going to set to 3. That just means that after I do my two learning steps, meaning I have to get a card correct two days in a row before it graduates, that gives me breathing room because I know if I get a card right two days in a row, I can get a card right one day, have a good night's rest of sleep, and get the card right again the next day. That tells me that I'm ready to graduate it, and when I graduate it, I'll see it again in three days. Keep the easy interval at 4. No, no reason to change that. Uh, when you start using Anki, you'll see you have a couple options uh, in terms of the buttons. It'll be again, good, hard, and then easy. Easy just means that you're stretching the interval out. So kind of similar to pressing again or hard, you're widening the interval. So if we go back to what we said before, the one day, three days, seven days, if you press easy, it might be one day, four days, nine days, something like that. So insertion order, this is the, how the order you'll see the new cards. I think sequential is fine, like oldest cards first. When you're learning new cards, you're not trying to you know, see them all random. It's going to make it harder to do the cards and take a longer time. When you do your reviews, they will be random like we said earlier, but new cards, it's fine to leave it like that. So basically, the lapse is the number of times you get a card wrong. And so you can see here's the relearning step. So after pressing again a certain number of times, you're going to end up getting this lapse phase. So the leech threshold is the number of times you press again before it, it gets suspended, which we want to change to tag, because basically if you get a card wrong eight times, you want to only tag it because you want to keep all the cards in circulation. Suspending a card means you suspend it and you won't see it anymore, and sometimes you're getting a card wrong, that's a card you probably need to see more often and not 
suspended. So you should tag it. So if you start to see some cards that are tagged, that means you've gotten it wrong uh, eight times based on this leech threshold. And we can set the relearning time to 30 minutes. So if you get it wrong and it's already a mature or graduated card, then you'll see it again in 30 minutes. You can see that's kind of outlined here. Timer is just the time they'll show you on the card. So you can have show answer timer. It just helps you study faster and more efficiently. Bury new siblings until the next day. Bury review siblings until the next day. So you don't want to bury the new siblings because even if you have a sibling card, which is basically just a card that has multiple blanks on the same card. So for example, if this was a flash card, right? It would be bury blank siblings until the blank day. And so there'll be two flashcards from this one sentence. So bury new siblings until the next day. It would just bury them so that you don't see the new cards the same day. But when you learn new cards, you want to see everything, even if they are the same. So leave it as off, but then for review cards, you can save the review card for the next day so you don't see the same flash card both on the same day, because then you'll kind of see the answer for the other blank when you're answering the first flash card. So that's what uh, I would recommend. Audio, you can just leave it like this. There's not really many audio flash cards. And finally, the advance. This is kind of where everything would be sort of pieced together. Um, you hear me using terms like ease and b easy and hard intervals and stuff. This will kind of explain it. So first something easy is the maximum interval. How long until you see a card, right? Uh, honestly, in medical school, I like to use 180. Every six months, I think that's like the maximum I would want to space out a card. To me, I know some YouTubers and such like to go longer, but I feel like six months is that if you get a card right and it's at the maximum interval, you'll see it in six months. If you get it right again, you'll see it another six months. That ensures that you just see certain flashcards twice a year. Twice a year is not much at all, and I feel like I'd rather just see it um, just to make sure I have it in memory. I think theoretically you can put it to like 365,000 or whatever the default is and let Anki kind of do its work to retain it long, long term. But like I said, I'm not here to use Anki for 10 years. I'm here to use it to excel in the medical boards and uh, do its purpose for me and then uh, transition over to the next thing. So Anki has helped me do well in step one, hopefully step two coming up. And um, that's kind of what I use, 180 days. Starting ease, leave it at 2.5. This is essentially the same as 250% or 2.5. That's the starting ease of the card, and every card will start at 2.5. And basically the way the math works is that it will just multiply the interval by 2.5. So that's why if you see a card in one day times 2.5, then it'll round up, you see it in three days. and three days times 2.5, you'll see it in seven days. That's where that kind of comes from. The easy bonus would be adding an additional, you know, multiplying it by 2.5, then also by 1.3, so that's what expands the interval. And then hard would just multiply by 1.2, so that would shrink the interval. Basically the hard interval is shrinking it, and the easy interval is stretching it out. That's really all you need to know. Interval modifier, you just leave it at 1. Basically at 1, it's multiplied by 1, it means it's doing nothing. But basically this will change the way your interval is for your entire deck. So if you change this to like 0 0.9, that means that you're going to see all your cards more often. So if you feel like you're someone that needs to see things more often because you're getting a lot of cards wrong, you can change this to 0 0.9. If you feel like you're seeing cards too early and you already know all the answers is going so fast, you can change this to like 1.1 or 1.2, and that will expand the interval of all your cards. I just leave it at 1. I don't think this, you really need to mess with anything. And the new interval has to do with like the lapses over here, and it's related to like the new interval when you lapse on a card. Honestly, you can just leave it at like 0 0.2 and that'll be fine and I wouldn't worry about that. So go ahead and save these settings. If you have any questions on this, just let me know uh, in the comment section below. I know Anki has a steep learning curve, but I'm happy to answer questions. But honestly, if you have these settings, that will be a great start to starting Anki. So now you're pretty much all set to go. You know, I'm a USMLE Step 1 tutor and I set up Anki for a lot of my students. I do it the exact same way like this every time and everyone has done well and I've been happy with the results as well as in my own education. Uh, at this point, all you would have to do is file and import and then you can select whichever deck you want to insert uh, into this. Press it, open, and then you'll be set to go. I have videos I can link in the top right here uh, of how to set up on King decks, how to set up MCAT decks and such. And honestly, from there, you'll be all set to go, and hopefully uh, this will be a good uh, study strategy for you. So once you start studying, you can see things like stats, and it'll tell you how you're doing, and you can look at all of this. I have videos on my Anki statistics after step one. You can go ahead and follow that to figure out how to 
interpret those things more but I hope you enjoyed the video all right everyone so there you have it the easy step-by-step -step way to set up Anki and get started on your academic endeavors Anki has helped me tremendously in medical school and I hope it can help all of you on your MCATs your USMLE exams or anything you're deciding to use Anki for don't forget to check out all the other videos on my channel for more up-to-date information or more in-depth ways to use Anki such as add-ons and making your own flashcards and things like that thanks again for tuning in have a great rest of your week.